Welcome to Love Where You Live, a production of the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce designed to help all of us kind of become reacquainted and excited about the wonderful things that go on throughout Sheboygan County. I'm Betsy Alice. I'm the Executive Director of the Chamber. And this morning, we have a very special guest with us. This year, for the first time, the Sheboygan County Chamber hosted the International Athena Leadership Award. And winning that award this year, and as a surprise to her, was Donna Wendland from the YMCA, the Sheboygan County YMCA. So we have Donna with us here this morning, and I'm going to ask Donna just a few questions about leadership and women in leadership in particular, um, just to kind of get that conversation going in our community, and so that all of you can begin to think about how to best elevate women in the workplace throughout Sheboygan County. Welcome to the show, Donna. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Yes, and congratulations on this big win. Well, I am truly humbled. It was uh, a wonderful capstone to my career. Yeah, fabulous. And to be the first is mm -hmm. also a nice yes, thing. Yes, that was <laughs> very exciting. So it's all a surprise. People mm -hmm. don't know until the day of. Um, and so I just, you know, just as a quick thing, we're going to get back to your leadership piece, but I'd like you to share with us your career and how you came to be now the CEO and president of our YMCA. How did that happen? Well, I really wanted to teach swimming to children. I had watched swimming lessons at Central High School when I took my sisters, and I wanted to be a swim instructor. So I was a member of the YMCA, and they only had one woman that was the aquatic director at the time, and she really could use assistance. So I volunteered at 13 and did that then when through 14 and 15 and in the 1960s you needed to be 16 years old to actually have a work permit mm -hmm. so at 16 I received my first work permit and started at the YMCA as a swim instructor then moved on in college days to be the aquatic director and swim coach and after college uh, aquatic director physical director I worked as a youth director assistant uh, executive director, finally the Sheboygan executive director, and in 1990, when Don Lohman retired, I became the CEO. Boy, that's really a great. Mm -hmm. So you've spent your entire career at the YMCA. The YMCA has been so supportive of my ideas and some of my goals that I just continued to grow, and there were always new opportunities and I started to become very invested in the YMCA. We have great support from our national Y of the USA that uh, provides, um, what would you say, added learning opportunities. Mm -hmm. They provide marketing. They provide all levels of support. So that helps us as a, a local autonomous Y. Really a fine organization. Mm -hmm. You know I have a history with them yes. as well. So I appreciate the, the mm -hmm. kind of investment that they make in people. Mm -hmm. Uh, they really, really do. So I think I'm, a, I'm actually a senior program director with the YMCA. We're sisters then with that. <laughs> yeah. I, my original goal was to be a physical education teacher, mm -hmm. okay. but I was not able to go out of Sheboygan for college. So I went to UW Center and Lakeland College, which was the best thing I could ever do because I stayed with our family and also was able to work at the YMCA. But found that in teaching, sometimes people are not, or children and teens aren't as willing to come to a Phi Ed class. But at the YMCA, you walk in that door because you want to be there. So I think that has oh, always provided the fuel and the energy. That's a really great way to mm -hmm. put it. I never thought about that mm -hmm. before. So tell me, and you're, you know, you, you're quite a leader in the community in many ways more than just mm -hmm. in your profession. Did you have mentors along the way that really stand out in your mind that, that helped you become the leader that you are today? Well, I was very fortunate to work with Don Lohman, who was from Iowa and came to Sheboygan in the late 70s. And he helped to develop my leadership skills through um, his example and also allowing me to try different ideas that I would develop or letting me head up different events at the YMCA and just helped to form some of my leadership ability. Uh, I've also had several others, you know, along the way. 
at the YMCA, our uh, chairman of our boards changes every three years. So I've had the opportunity to work with top leaders throughout the county through uh, since 1990. And this, you know, the, I think as as women and probably anyone mm -hmm. aspiring to be a leader, these people become very a very important part of the puzzle. You know, I, do. I don't think we learned this when we were 15. I don't. No, no. You know. I've learned, uh, like from Tom Balot, to have vision and how to structure things so that you can reach your vision. He was one of my mentors, mm -hmm. and Steve Larson, more the most, the last person that has led our YMCA through the uh, building project in 2011, mm -hmm. and his term of office just finished this year. He showed me how to actually make significant sales how to position yourself correctly before you make, make the next move. So he's also been a great mentor. Oh, that's a great, um, that's a great thing to, to have in mm -hmm. your, I never thought about that either. When you're in a nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. you have a volunteer board of directors. So mm -hmm. those people in leadership on your board can often teach you different facets of what you're doing. Yes. That's a great thing. So if you were to speak to young people who aspire to lead, what kinds of characteristics or skills would you recommend that they, they or, or even opportunities and experiences, mm -hmm. things that you might ask them to take on in their aspiration to be a leader? Well, I think someone that's looking to, for leadership opportunities should um, maybe start, if they're younger, start like with Girl Scouts. That's where my initial leadership opportunities were, uh, leading an effort within your troop. Also, different community service clubs provide many things. The Rotary Club, of which I'm part of, allowed me to be the president for a year, and that was an amazing opportunity. We had 100 members, two of us were women at the time. And just to bring wow. in more women to the club, of now it is more, more balanced, but to actually take on opportunities like that through Girl Scouts, service clubs, your church, so you know, serve on your church council, um, serve as a representative in school, mm -hmm. just depending upon what level you are at. Just take those things on and try them and do mm -hmm. your best. Mm -hmm. I think that's really a, that there are so many projects and positions that children and kids can aspire to while they're young. And school offers a lot. I started as a co-director of the ninth grade play at Urban and then moved on to South High School and took on the social committee, which was fun. I was going to say, that sounds doing good. Doing part yeah. for homecoming and the seasonal dances and things. So that helped to build some of the leadership skills. Mm -hmm. But in about 1990, I would say, I discovered that leadership isn't about always being in front. It's about having a talented team and being part of that team. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it took a shift, while to develop that. That shift of power is very interesting. Mm -hmm. I find nothing more um, enriching than being able to watch someone else get applause. Mm -hmm. That is now the high point of my career. Yes. And I don't recall exactly when that happened, but I, I know it was very clear. Mm -hmm. you know, it was a really wonderful thing to have. So does the learning ever stop? No, it's amazing. Uh, just last week, I read something in the Milwaukee Journal, and it was about working with millennials in a leadership position. And this author was recommending that you, that you move away from the annual review and actually do something on a monthly basis at least, because they would like to know more timely how their progress is going. Mm -hmm. So, and then I'm thinking, well, that concept is not so new. I mean, I always enjoyed feedback, and maybe we should have started this long ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're having waiting for the annual too. review. Yes. Yeah. I know the annual review was always, as as my career developed, always that time where you were suddenly totally unsure. Yes. Like, boy, I don't know what they're going to say to me. No. But really, in reality, you kind of know all along. Um, and in a good organization, I think in a healthy one, you do know mm -hmm. from day to day, week to week how you're doing. Mm -hmm. So that kind of culture, I love the monthly idea. Mm -hmm. It's a really good, in fact, I'm going to note that one. We're going to talk to our employers about what they're doing. Oh, they good to, idea. Yeah. Because yeah. if millennials want it, millennials will get it. Mm -hmm. They <laughs> will. I'm learning it. that, yeah. Yeah. There's, we have such a need for, for workers um, mm -hmm. and for professionals and people to develop early. Yes. 
like leadership, our, our companies often say, we're going to have to promote these people into leadership when they're still in their 20s and 30s. Mm -hmm. And so what kind of training and development will they need in order to do that effectively? And I have several at the YMCA in that age and, and asking to take on leadership positions. And as the top executive, you need to trust them and allow them to do it. And when you allow mm -hmm. it, you have to know there may be some twists and turns, maybe some things that don't turn out exactly as you would have done, mm -hmm. but you need to allow it and let them feel the, the whole event. I love that. Yeah, I do, because mm -hmm. think about your own career, and we're about in the same generation. Mm -hmm. If I think back to all the times I felt like I was really held back yes, by getting bits and pieces of a project or getting, you know, not feeling ownership, mm -hmm. um, but simply kind of being piecemeal mm -hmm. through, a, through a process when I probably could have let it. Yes, definitely. You know? So that's a really good change. Mm -hmm. I think that will happen. I, mm -hmm. I, I notice we've kind of come from an authoritarian kind of workplace to now a much more um, uh, self-motivated, uh, from the bottom up kind of culture. I would agree with you. The light came on in my mind after reading Ralph Steyer's book mm -hmm. uh, in the early 1990s. And I did a master's program with Cardinal Stritch and I did my thesis on development of teams in the workplace because it had already started in other places than Sheboygan but it was fairly new to Sheboygan so after doing a survey of our employees I found that who better knows how to clean this YMCA than the maintenance mm -hmm. team and that a clean facility is the utmost thing that someone looks at as a member they want a clean working facility right. so all of a sudden you elevate the maintenance team and their director to where they have ownership of how they're going to take care of the building when it's going to be cleaned and they are happier employees it's a cleaner building and the team structure works so that was quite a revelation yeah it sounds so logical too now mm -hmm. in it retrospect. does yes that's interesting so what's the most rewarding aspect of your position now in in your work and in the community? I think it's uh, seeing the young professionals actually take on a project. Um, you know, we do discuss it, we do share ideas, but actually seeing them develop and finishing the project in a great a great manner, you know, with great success. Yes. Wow, that's a great great thing. Can you recall a time in your career? Because one of the one of the aspects that I should mm -hmm. show this book. Oh yes, do. This book is called Becoming Athena, and it is written by Martha Mayhood Mertz, who was really the founder of the Athena Award in the early '80s. And I happened; she was a, a peer of mine in Lansing, Michigan. So, um, but one of the uh, pieces of this is strong advocacy mm -hmm. on behalf of other people in what they're doing and mm -hmm. so I just wanted you to share if you've ever had the opportunity to advocate on someone's behalf mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a, a leadership kind of position. I have and it's in regards to our Live Strong program at the YMCA. Denise Nugent, our senior physical director and she's in charge of the gymnastic program, had worked with several people that had recovered from cancer at the YMCA helping them become stronger through personal workouts and fitness classes. Well, an opportunity developed with the National YMCA, and they offered a grant to starting the Live Strong program at your YMCA. This would be competing among all the states of um, the United States for this grant, and they only selected three YMCAs at each year to go through the development of this program. So we had to advocate for our YMCA that we had the correct staff instruct in place, that we completed all the required courses, that our facility was up to par, and that we would have a strong director, which would be Denise Nugent, to run mm -hmm. the program. So we actually went through a two-year application with this, and we were selected. So it was uh, a period of advocacy for the YMCA and Denise Nugent as a strong leader for the program. Wonderful. Yes, mm -hmm. a, a, a strong woman leader of yes. the program. That's fabulous. So, you know, the advocacy piece, I think, too, about the YMCA in general, mm -hmm. you're really an advocacy organization in so many respects. 
you know, for young children, for mm -hmm. strong families, for uh, good health, for all of those things that, mm -hmm. you know, can really enrich a life. Oh my gosh, change a life. Yes. Yeah, Any anything you can recall in terms of a family that came to the YMCA in a situation where you needed to show strong advocacy for them or help them along the way? We have several cases and it's usually a single parent family, whether it be a mom or a dad that is bringing the children in and need a, need a little help through our scholarship program for membership, possibly child care, working with them to make sure that the children are um, taken care of, you know, that they're bused from school back to the Y so that the parent can actually hold a job. We've had several that are struggling with cancer mm -hmm. to where the mom um, wanted the children to go to some summer camp so that they wouldn't be home when she was so ill after her treatments and trying to help that family stay strong. Wow. So uh, we've also helped people that have changed their lives, they become healthier, uh, have lost um, many, many pounds and taken the right turn to avoid uh, type 2 diabetes. Wow, that's fabulous. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting project. So you talk about teams. Mm -hmm. How do you celebrate at the Y with your teams? With a high five and yeah. a lot of smiles and yays. Uh, food is always a good, uh, Absolutely. A good celebration. We'll have a special lunch at the Y. Uh, now and then we um, actually have t-shirts printed when we did our 2011 building project. We were so excited yeah. about that. So everyone received a t-shirt with We Build Together just to bring That's that great. team atmosphere together. Well, congratulations again to you. I mean, for your leadership in the community. Mm -hmm. We're so fortunate to have you here. Oh, well, thank you. And, and I just want to say that next year this award program will happen again. I believe we're going to do it in November in 2018. Okay. I'm going to move the date a little bit, but same kind of um, pro program. So if there are women in leadership or people who really promote women to leadership positions, they can be a man or a woman, um, please consider nominating them for our Athena International Leadership Award. Mm -hmm. So congrats to Donna. Oh, thank you, Betsy. Yes. And next on our program, we are going to welcome Sean Jackson, who is the new Community Relations Director at the Sheboygan County YMCA, or <laughs> at the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. So. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Love Where You Live, a production of the Sheboygan County Chamber. I'm Betsy Alice. Glad to be here today. And we have a special guest uh, on this segment, segment of our program. Sean Jackson is the new Community Relations Director at the Chamber. Welcome, Sean. Thank you, Betsy. Good to be here. Yeah. We, uh, we have uh, we searched far and wide, <laughs> and we came up with someone from Sheboygan. <laughs> you did. Yeah. yeah. No, that was great. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Sean, and what, first of all, kind of what your background is professionally, sure. and, and then maybe um, what special yeah. talents you think you bring to the chamber. Okay. Well, like you said, I am from Sheboygan, uh, born and raised in Sheboygan okay. County. I moved away to go to college and had been working in the restaurant industry for a long time and somehow found my way out to West Bend, Wisconsin and owned a restaurant out there for 10 years. Uh, That's and a I had big a, deal. I know. <laughs> a lot of work. And I actually was smart enough to buy another one uh, down near Oconomowoc for about a four-year stretch in the middle. So. Um, after uh, I was tired of working 90 hour weeks and going to have my first child, I moved out of the restaurant business. Um, I spent the next 14 years in two industries, one in autos, sales, sales management, general sales management, finance director, so ran that gamut. Um, also spent five years as the consumer lending manager for Kohler Credit Union. Uh, so I've been back in Sheboygan for about 13 years. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've also been involved in service organizations like the Kiwanis of Greater Sheboygan. I was the president with them. Uh, Sheboygan Liars Club, which, you know, yeah, uh, I love that has name. to do with dice, not the other thing. Yeah. But, you know, handicapped uh, organizations we've supported. I'm mm -hmm. um, involved in the Elks, uh, helping with their junior, bro uh, junior bowling program with my kids. So, um, yeah, love this community. It's just, you know, the whole county is amazing. The, the, the features and amenities, the state parks are awesome. The lakefront, obviously, yeah. Road America, the Gulf. I mean, 
I, you know, I we're pretty lucky. The best county to live in. Let's it is. Way. I think it is. <laughs> we are very lucky. So you've you've been on the job now for about a month. Mm -hmm. So what are your first impressions of the Sheboygan County Chamber? Like I said, I was a, a business owner and I was involved in a chamber. It was a good chamber, but it was a you know a local community chamber, and they were what they did was good but it was a little limited and what I'm seeing in the Sheboygan County Chamber is just a very vibrant chamber uh, over 900 members um, mm -hmm. in all segments all sizes from you know a single mom-and-pop yeah. retail shop all the way up to large manufacturers um, the Sheboygan County Chamber offers so many uh, benefits and programs and events where there's not a, a thing that a business can't latch on to and learn from be educated, mm -hmm. uh, benefit from. Um, so yeah, just incredibly vibrant chamber. Yeah, I think the hardest part for the members is selecting, you know, <laughs> and is. understanding the entire scope. Yeah. So we always try to figure out what might most interest them, mm -hmm. but it's hard. It is. A it is, and that's you know part of my job is mm -hmm. gonna is gonna try to match up, you know, the the retailers, their goals and and their visions for their company or their business with what we offer and try to help them succeed. Absolutely. So what, what it, yeah, another first impression, I guess, after just a month, <laughs> what do you see as maybe the high value offerings to the whole gamut of members? Boy, um, there are so many, it's hard to pick. Uh, you know, the business roundtables uh, stood out to me right away because I had been involved in roundtables before, uh, but the ones we do are facilitated um, by our, our John Rogers and he does an awesome job so he really keeps um, focus on what they're trying to accomplish in the roundtables you can get you know there's eight different roundtables there's different focuses there's a sales roundtable there's an innovation roundtable there's a nonprofit roundtable and others um, I'll talk about the innovation one because I mm -hmm. sat in on that one and you know there were some higher level folks from healthcare and manufacturing in a school district but as a previous business owner, again, I looked at that. A restaurant owner could sit in the innovation roundtable. Uh, a repair shop could, uh, you know, pretty much anybody could sit on that because we're all concerned with innovation as a business owner. You know, mm -hmm. staying ahead of the curve, mm -hmm. you know, finding out what's new, how solving to solving problems, solving problems. And that's mm -hmm. the neat thing about that is you 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 state what an issue you're having is, and as a peer network, you talk about that and you come up with creative solutions to your issues. You come up with outside the box thinking. You know, as a, as a business owner, whether you're an executive or a restaurant owner, sometimes you get into the grind and you have blinders on, and you don't see the outside world. You just see what's in front of you today, and this allows you to see how others deal with these issues and there's again there, you walk out of that and you will learn something yeah so. yeah they're amazing and they're offered at no additional cost which is amazing yeah. because there's a lot of places that charge for round tables that's right. this is part of your membership so yeah, yeah. it is a, it is a nice benefit um, anything else any other high value offerings um, I think really any good chamber just does a good job at, at networking their folks and, and getting referrals and we do a, a tremendous job at that. I mean our phone is ringing nonstop, people calling in and asking about you know where to go for this or where to go for that or how can I get this and, and us giving out tons of referrals both over the phone and our website. Our website is Sheboygan.org. I mean it right. is the portal to Pretty anybody. Easy. It is. It's, it's the portal for anyone looking to you know visit, relocate to, open a business in Sheboygan County. Mm -hmm. Everybody comes to our site. Um, we had a new member, see both Delhi, great place on the mm -hmm. south side of Sheboygan. Yes, um, nice ad there. Yeah, I know. Yeah, great <laughs> But, place. you know, they've been, uh, a little over three months they've been a member, and I just looked yesterday, they've had over 560 uh, directory hits, people coming to our, our website and opening up their directory to find out about that business. And even better yet, they've had over 260 click-throughs to their website from our website. And probably to see the menu. Exactly. And again, that business listing is free to them. It's a great way for referrals and you would pay a lot more for that going to you know, some company. Absolutely. So I know you've been scrambling so far. It's only been a month. <laughs> yeah, um, and you know, occasionally you'll, you'll have a, a success at something more than occasionally. And I'll hear about it later and I'll say, Sean, you know, you need to just email me let me know that happened I love that stuff right. so I know you've been scrambling to get ahead in a variety of areas what do you how do you determine what your priorities are and what might they be at this point boy um, I think my biggest priority right now other than learning everything I can about the chamber mm -hmm. is networking with our members you know I I'm 
to me, I take this job very personally because I live here, my kids are here, mm -hmm. I want to raise my family, I want to support my community, I want to make things better. So getting out and meeting with the members to find out what they're all about, you know, wh what do they do, what are they looking for from me in the chamber, um, who can I get them involved with that could help them, um, and, right. and just take it personally, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, my, my big long title, you know, Community Relations Director of the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce, that doesn't roll off the tongue very easily, just I want to be the chamber guy. Yeah. Any member, anybody looking to, to be a member, call the chamber guy and we'll help you out. All right, I love that. I'll start referring to you that way. <laughs> um, uh, so what, what in this job appealed to you and still appeals to you the most? Every day is different. Every, you know, I mean, I, I like to be active. I like to be out in the community. You can see from my resume that I'm always involved in something. I love to network with people. I love to help people. Um, so it's really just getting out there and being able to do so many different things on a daily basis that I hopefully will help impact and, and strengthen our business community. That's great. You know, so once, once in a while I refer to it like, What's the memory card game you play with your kids where you flip the cards over? Oh, it's and, a memory game, yeah. <laughs> well, I feel like that at our events or at our expo, things where I, I go, oh, that business does that. Right. Wow, there's a business over there they need to meet. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the strongest things our staff offers right. and our ambassadors offer is that ability to connect business to business. It is my passion and yours too, I'm sure, to have Sheboygan County businesses doing as much business as possible right here in Sheboygan County. You bet. You so. bet. And, and, you know, we have 100,000 people in the, in the county, over 3,500 businesses. Um, there's so much more work we can do to help. I agree with you. And I, I also, you know, just want to reference very quickly the workforce development piece mm -hmm. and our Coastal Young Professionals group. Yes. And our advocacy. Um, <laughs> Our business advocacy has been coming on very strong in the last couple of years. So uh, we have a great team at the chamber, I will say. Um, the work is being done by some top professionals there. So if your business has any interest in joining the chamber, call the chamber guy. There you um, go. <laughs> and uh, and he will, he's very responsive and we have a lot of things that I think we can help you with. So. Thank you, Sean, for joining us today. Congrats on the position. We're thrilled to have you. I'm thrilled so, to be here. Okay. All right, Thank great. You. Thanks.